going to be doing a lot with hydroponic strawberries today. I need to turn off this water real quick. Just filling up the nutrient tank. A few years ago we had strawberries growing in this main greenhouse and we had them in these NFT channels and we got the most sweet and red and just awesome strawberries but the problem was they clogged up the channels. So mom would come out here and she'd look and the channel would be leaking and they'd get so big that we couldn't pull the channel out. So we'd actually have to get underneath, crawl around in the gravel and sit down and sit there and harvest the strawberries up like that. Did you talk about shaking the channels to pollinate them? No. I forgot about that, <laughs> I forgot about that. Remember I used, every morning I had to come by and shake the channels like that so they would pollinate? Because there's not enough breeze in here, at least outside there's enough breeze that they pollinate because I, I don't think the bumblebees and bees go in the high tunnel. For the NFT channels, we just like to grow our lettuces, our greens, and our herbs. You want to try one? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, try one. happy to find out that a lot of people are interested in how we reuse our growing medium. So these um, baby cucumbers here are planted in the old bean medium and mom cleaned it out. She let it dry out, fluffed it up. I think she added just a little bit of perlite and the cucumbers are just as happy as can be. So dad's still been taking care of the cucumbers. But to give you an idea of the scale of what you can produce off of hydroponics, we only have 12 cucumber buckets that are actively producing. And every week we've been getting 60 or more cucumbers. For how many weeks have you been getting that many? Four weeks now. For a month now. And these still have over a month left to go. So a lot of cucumbers. So remember, to get this many cucumbers, you gotta make sure you harvest like every day or at least every other day. Otherwise, you get this happening. They start shriveling up the little ones there. That's not good. So it wasn't working when I put the new batteries in it because that one was all corroded. So I took it up to dad and he fixed it. I guess that'll happen in a humid greenhouse. Here's the sensor for the front of the greenhouse. And we just checked this one so we know it's not corroded. But these all feed into the weather station here in the control tunnel. And then this weather station feeds to mom's phone. So she always knows the temperature and the humidity and all that inside of the greenhouse. And we also have one of those sensors out in the high tunnel. So I should probably check that one too. So we ended up having two habaneros and two Carolina Reapers germinate. Habanero. So I think that'll be plenty though, because each plant, if you get them going, they'll produce a lot of peppers. a little drinky. These are just in the 50-50 perlite vermiculite mix and I'm giving them a little bit of the leafy greens formula. I just need to water the peppers and tomatoes up here and then we'll be done in the main greenhouse. I know I say this a lot but it's getting hot.
these strawberries are all grown hydroponically. They are in the perlite vermiculite mixture, and then we have them in these white plastic buckets. So mom has been working hard planting her new crop. These are down here. And then dad has been working hard on building the support system. So it's gonna be nice having that done. Um, he's still got a little bit of work to do. He's actually working on that right now. So hydroponic strawberries are really fun to do. You can do, I mean, I've seen huge greenhouses full of them, or like us, we're gonna have a few rows and you can also just do like a bucket or two. We're even gonna try putting our extra plants into hanging baskets. But we're gonna use dirt for these because these will end up up by the house. You said 100 buckets? Yep, I got 100 buckets here. 500 strawberry plants I ordered. And so there's five plants in each bucket. So the medium I have these guys growing in is a half vermiculite and half perlite mixture. And why I did that is because I remember somebody telling me that strawberries like their roots compact. Just like when we had the strawberries in the NFT channels like we were talking about earlier, I ended up taking pieces of rock wool and wrapping it around the bare root and squishing it into the um, NFT channel. And I think that's why the strawberries did so well because they felt like they were in dirt because of they had compression around their roots. So that's why I ended up doing half vermiculite, half perlite. And you can see here, you can see the crown sticking up just a little bit like um, when you plant them in dirt. That one is showing a little bit, but so you want them up a little bit out because then they won't, won't grow good. These guys are really starting to take off. They've only been in here less than a week now. Thinking about putting a gutter on the ground here. And so when they, um, when you water them and the water drips out, that it goes into a waste so it just doesn't go all over the place but this um mat that we do have on the ground this ground cover it is um, water does go through it the ones from last year are seascape and what are the new ones these are albion okay they, um got uh, substituted to albion which is another ever bearing uh, variety that grows really good in containers and it's supposed to have a little bit bigger fruit and a little bit more disease resistance so so oh yeah, what kind of fertilizer are you thinking for these? Then? I'm thinking a, a general fertilizer to begin with. I'm going to do a little bit more research on the strawberries. And um, just a water, nice water soluble. I don't know if it's going to be 10, 10, 10 or whatever, but something like that. Yeah. As long as it's water soluble. Yeah, we'll let you know. Yep, we'll figure it out and let you know and see how we do. <laughs> you know how in um, inside the greenhouse we were talking about pollinating, how you used to have to shake the channels to get it to pollinate? Well, in here, another reason why we wanted them up a little bit higher is you're going to get a good breeze, and the breeze will pollinate the strawberries for me, so I don't have to worry about it. And you know what else is good about the strawberry plants being this tall? What? Little boys can't steal strawberries like they did last year. <laughs> so when you do your emitters, each one of these buckets is going to have what, one emitter, or what are you thinking? I'm thinking two emitters okay. to each one, and it's going to be the pressure ones. 0.5 gallon per minute or something like that. I'm not sure. Dad works out all the details on that. Part of strawberry care, at least for these varieties, is to remove the flowers while they're still little because we want the plants to put their energy into getting themselves bigger and then put out strawberries. Then we will get bigger and more strawberries in the end. You can just pinch them off with your fingers. Yeah, I had some extra strawberry plants, and so I decided I'm gonna make some baskets and hang them around the back of the house. So these really are the ones that you just clean. They look brand new. Yeah, yep, I just um, soaked them in a light bleach solution in the um, middle tub last night, and they got all clean. Even the um, hangers got really nice and clean. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's okay. awesome. Yeah. This is how they came in the mail, and they come 25 in a bunch, and they have a little bit of wet paper towels or wet paper in there, so they come with rubber bands on them. So I picked these up, I forget what day it was, but I wasn't able to play them right away. So what you need to do is put them in a cooler or a cool place so they stay fresh so you can plant them. And you can tell these still look really good, because if you don't, they'll get mold and they'll get all slimy and gooey and gross. So you want to make sure when you um, plant this, you don't bury the crown. So you make sure you dig a deep enough hole. It's so weird working in dirt. Get all the roots down there and push the dirt around it and make sure part of the crown is still up and it's not buried. And then you'll have a good strawberry plant. And 
strawberries like their roots compacted, so it's good to push the dirt around them. So you're doing this either in dirt or hydroponically. You want to do it the same way. So we have these left over, and these are from Johnny Seed, by the way. I don't think we want to do any more baskets. So what mom wants me to do is go through and some of them didn't make it. So I'm going to pull out the ones that died. There's just a few of them and put in these good ones. There was only a few that didn't come up maybe five or six out of 500 so that's the nice thing about johnny seed too is they'll send extra strawberries with the order okay so we're all really getting excited for strawberries this year uh, this is going to be our biggest crop and um, I just want to say that I really appreciate all the comments that you guys give me. I read them all. But sometimes I get one saying that hydroponic produce is bland or doesn't have any flavor. Um, and that makes me sad because these strawberries are good. When you cut through them, they are red all the way through. They are really sweet and really juicy. And honestly, when we bring them to the farm market, they are the first thing to sell out. So if you grow your hydroponic strawberries the right way and give them the right nutrition, they turn out awesome. Oh, another one. These are the impatience we started a while ago in the oasis cubes that we had in the main greenhouse. And mom figured they're getting so big we may as well get these in the baskets too while we're at it. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to set up a couple of saw horses and have some shade cloth and put them in the high tunnel so they're shaded since impatience like the shade. Good so, idea. Yeah. yeah. And because I don't really want to bring soil into the um, hydroponic greenhouse either. True. Yeah. So we're going to have to make sure we water these really good and keep them well watered because they're so used to being in the, in the hydroponic. So we're a little late getting the impatience in the baskets, but they're not our cash crop. So we always take care of the greenhouse, the hydroponic lettuce, and the tomatoes first. So this is kind of like a hobby, side thing that we try to do every year and every once in a while it gets away from us. But we have fun doing it and uh, eventually they do turn out to be pretty nice little baskets. Well guys, I got my seeds started back at home, but there's really not much to see yet. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, I feel like we got a lot done today, but there's still so much to do. So I'm sure I'll be seeing you all again here soon. Thanks for watching.